This is Greg Johnson, and this is Lesson 7 of our Old Testament study series. Today's lesson is called The God of Second Chances. In the last couple of lessons, we looked at the lives or the stories of some of the kings of Judah as they were struggling with different situations in their life. Eventually, as you know, the whole kingdom, the whole nation was taken into captivity. In Lesson 6, we saw how Hezekiah, although a good king, allowed pride to enter his life. Hezekiah is a good example of repentance. Hezekiah humbled himself before God. God honored Hezekiah's efforts and blessed Hezekiah and the whole nation of Judah. Hezekiah followed the instructions that God had given Solomon and that really all of us should pay attention to if difficulties come in our life. Well, let me go ahead and read those. In 2 Chronicles 7.14, God told to Solomon, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. In fact, these are prerequisites that we should all strive for in our lives, even if everything is great and there is no calamity. So what do the third seek my face and the fourth uh, turn from wicked ways, what are these, what are the third and fourth prerequisites look like? We're going to use Hezekiah's son, Manasseh, as an example. So even though Hezekiah was a good king and he followed the Lord wholeheartedly, his son Manasseh did evil in the eyes of the Lord. He practiced sorcery, divination, witchcraft, and even sacrificed his sons in the fire. In 2 Chronicles 33, verses 10 and 11, the Bible says, The Lord spoke to Manasseh and his people, but they paid no attention. In verse 11, So the Lord brought against them the army commanders of the king of Assyria, who took Manasseh prisoner, put a hook in his nose, bound him with bronze shackles, and took him to Babylon. Manasseh was in great distress because of all these things. I mean, being hauled out of his nation and taken miles and miles away to a foreign kingdom uh, in Babylon. And basically, he was in prison and in shackles. It was pretty, pretty stressful, pretty severe. And because of this great distress, Manasseh humbled himself. Now, he had a good example, even though he became king at a young age, because his father Hezekiah had done the same sort of thing. In fact, here's a picture of Hezekiah uh, humbling himself before God. And in verse 12, we'll read, so 2 Chronicles chapter 33 in verse 12, we read, In his distress, so this is Manasseh's distress, he sought the favor of the Lord his God and humbled himself greatly before the God of his ancestors. Verse 13, And when he prayed to him, the Lord was moved by his entreaty and listened to his plea. So he brought him back to Jerusalem and to his kingdom. Then Manasseh knew that the Lord is God. This was a great example of someone seeking God's face. To seek God's face is to humble yourself before your creator and to call out to him. Our God is a merciful God and is quick to embrace the one who seeks him. The next part of turning from wicked ways is also called repentance. And Manasseh did repent, as seen in the next set of verses. In verse 15 and 16, it says, he got, and this is talking about Manasseh, he got rid of the foreign gods and removed the image from the temple of the Lord, as well as all the altars he had built on the temple hill and in Jerusalem, and he threw them out of the city. Then he restored the altar of the Lord and sacrificed fellowship offerings and thank offerings on it and told Judah to serve the Lord, the God of Israel. Now God disciplined Manasseh because of his sinful behavior. But with Hezekiah, at one point in his life, 
the Bible said that God tested him. Both Hezekiah and Manasseh went through difficult times. How do we know if our difficulties are because we are being disciplined due to sin in our lives or because of another reason? Well, we have a few takeaways. So God tests everybody, even the faithful. So even when we're close to God, even when we have a good relationship with God, we're going to be tested. Tests of faith are not to enlighten God. God already knows everything. He sees everything. Really, their purpose is to teach us. So there are a number of different reasons that we go through difficult times or times of testing. Sometimes we go through times of testing to strengthen our character. God wants us to become more and more like his son, Jesus. This is the process of sanctification. Or we go through uh, tough times to prove our faith is genuine. That brings honor to God and inspires others. It could be to remove our spiritual impurities. Maybe there's certain certain things in us. Uh, maybe we're quick to anger or uh, uh, some other spiritual impurity that God is trying to refine and change. It could actually be that as we're God's children, that he is disciplining us. So maybe there's something in our life, something that is not pleasing to God, and God, like a parent, is going to discipline us to help us to go in the right way. Or it could actually be that God is pleased with us, and he wants to reveal himself to the world by our attitude as we are going through that trial. You know, there may be many possible reasons, maybe even more than this. It may be that we're going through a difficult situation just because we live in a fallen world, and maybe there's, and there is sin in the world, and it's maybe somebody's sinning against us, and we're reaping those repercussions of somebody else's sin, somebody else's selfishness or, or wrong behavior or greed. All of these things can cause pain, right? So sometimes the pain is a result of being in a fallen world. Also, it may be a combination of several of these things going on at the same time. God is all-powerful. He can use all different situations to refine us as well as to bring honor to himself, for example, as we have victory in that refinement process. The simple fact is, is there may be no simple explanation of why we go through these things. The only thing we can do is ask God uh, God may say, I'm not going to tell you. I'm not going to give you an explanation right now, and we just need to trust. But through all of this, what we're called to do is we're called to dig into the Word of God, to call out to God, just like Hezekiah did, and to ask for God's intervention in our life. I'll give you one example in my own life where it might have been discipline. I'm not really sure. I'll give you uh, the scenario, and maybe you can you can see what you think. So as a consultant, I, I work in uh, the STEM field uh, in STEM education. And as a consultant, I was doing a lot of public speaking, presentations, consultant work. And at one point, I was doing these uh, TED, TED Talks. They weren't actually TED Talks, but they were that, that type of TED Talk in front of a, a live audience. It was being recorded uh, and then put online. And uh, as I watched other people do their do their talk, uh, share about you know facets of of you know our content area that that we're uh, um, you know trying to teach. Um, I was thinking to myself, golly, I could I could do a better job than all these people, right? Now you may be thinking, well, that, that guy is super prideful, and, and you're probably right. That that was an arrogant thought on my part. Now I wasn't even conscious of that thought initially, right? But I noticed that after that this feeling that I never really had. I never had problems speaking in front of live audiences before. I've never had any difficulty. But at that point, I started experiencing some anxiety that I never really felt before. You know, and I did, just like a lot of people who are trying to draw close to God, I pleaded with God. I asked God to take this anxiety away from me. I asked him to help me to, uh, you know, excel in my work, to help me in... Um, uh, getting over this, 
And to be honest with you, I didn't get over it for a long time. In fact, I don't even know now if I'm completely over it. But I think back and I'm thinking, so why did I go through that? Now, God didn't come down and tell me, you know, you went through it because of this, right? So a lot of times that's not how God works. Um, I, I didn't hear a voice and the voice said, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm disciplining you, Greg. I didn't hear that. But when I think through and pray about where I was at, we know that pride is displeasing to God. And uh, we, we learned that because that was the last, uh, last couple lessons, right? We learned, you know, Hezekiah had an issue with, uh, with pride and actually all of his ancestors, that whole lineage uh, had um, uh, struggles with pride at least at some point. And as I, as I look, you know, look back and I thought about how I thought of myself and uh, my uh, level of competence. And when I compare myself to other people, I, I definitely thought highly of myself, right? And, um, uh, you know, the Bible says not to consider ourselves more highly than what we should. It says to consider others better than ourselves. And so when I think about that, I think, and I'm not positive, but I'm thinking God allowed me, maybe even brought that anxiety on me to help me to through this, you know, help me through uh, this, this area of pride in my life. Now, God doesn't want to leave me where I am. In fact, he's uh, uh, more concerned with my spiritual growth and my comfort, right? And so he's going to bring, at least allow, but I'm thinking even bring these difficulties on us, on me, to help me to overcome these areas in my life. And uh, so I think through that, it really at least made me aware of my pride um, and, uh, you know, my arrogance when I wasn't, maybe even wasn't even really aware of that. And some of, some of that comes with just watching what our thoughts are, you know. Um, uh, Paul tells us to take every thought captive. Well, you can't take your thoughts captive unless you know what those thoughts are. So we have to have a certain level of, of um, metacognition where we're aware of our own thinking. And then we can take every thought captive. Uh, with that, I, I hope these are some things to think about.